Nothing in this podcast is intended as investment advice and the people in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy any investment based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research. Hello and welcome to the Midweek Takeaway. Today we're joined by Mark Routh, CEO of Prospects Energy. Welcome back, Mark. It's been a while. Thank you. Yes, good morning. Okay, so well, we just saw the positive news that uh, Prospects Energy has completed the final payment on the convertible loan note issued in September 2022, marking the company's transition to being debt-free. The repayment, totaling £175,239, covered the last of three quarterly instalments and accrued interest. Originally valued at 500000 these loans were provided by three individuals and convertible five and a half pence per share. You highlighted this achievement as a crucial step for prospects, which now enjoys a stable financial base thanks to monthly income from gas production in Italy and electricity sales from its Spanish power plant. With a debt-free status, the company is exploring various European energy projects focusing on natural gas, power and renewable energy. Prospects is actively preparing for future expansions, including drilling projects in Italy and Spain, leveraging surplus funds for investment in potential opportunities. Sounds like good progress, Mark. Yes, it is indeed. I must stress that though, this was a convertible loan aid issued back in September 22, and this final debt repayment is not being converted into shares. It's been paid from accumulated cash in the company. And it puts us in the very comfortable place that we're now completely debt-free and moving forward so we can look to, for our investment opportunities, knowing that not only are we debt-free, but we've got our overheads and our working, you know, all the working capital that we require, our overheads are completely covered from the production income we have from both Spain and Italy. That's great news. And obviously, from a, from a shareholder perspective, people are you know, hungry for things to be debt free and for costs to be covered and so on and so forth. But one of the reasons why you went into business, I presume, and why you listed was to use capital to move it forward. So how do you see that that's going to happen over the next period of time? And I suppose I'll give you a, I'll give you a scenario. If you had five million pounds tomorrow, how long do you think in terms of your uh, progress and and the things that you are that you are looking at would you be able to turn that into 10 million 15 million 20 million and what sort of time frame would that take you because at the end of the day we are a capital market so that's the whole point of uh, of us listing well i think it would take less than 18 months to, to convert that because uh you know we do know what we're doing here we we're developing gas assets and energy assets uh in order to convert those into money. So we, we can, now we're completely debt-free and we have our overheads covered from production. Anything that we do invest, be it debt or equity, will be directly to increase the value of the, the asset in the company and shed off more cash and build more value in the company. Um, yeah, and that's, a, that's got to be music to shareholders' ears that you know we're now in an extremely solid base you're not risking uh, anybody's uh, capital or or anything, but you actually have the ability to expand this process so that more value can be added to shareholders over the next period of time. So, I mean, that must be a great position to be in and also a position that I think you probably strive to be in from a few years ago when you first set this whole thing up. Yes, yeah, so when we issued the loan notes back in um, in 2022, that was uh, for a very particular purpose. That was to build the gas plant at Selva Malvezzi in Italy, which is now producing and the well that is producing gas there. And that has been a very, very successful development and has, let, and has given us that cash flow. One thing, I, I, I've just gone off the call. I've just been uh, uh, going through the audit process with the, with the audit committee. And uh, we, one thing you have to do is value all the assets of the company. Yeah, and the, the gas price at the end of last year had, was a lot higher than it is now. It was, it was up at uh, 50 euros or so uh, per megawatt hour, which is, which is a huge number uh, in, in the context of European gas prices. I mean, that's in the UK, that would be the 126 pence per firm. What we're seeing now is 30 euros per megawatt hour, which is still in the region of 60 or 75 pence per firm. And th these are huge numbers. You know, 30 euros and per megawatt hour, we're still making money. We're still generating cash from the assets at these, at these prices. It's just 
not as much cash as perhaps we might have predicted if they'd stayed up at higher than that. So yeah, the, the gas price has eased off a bit, but the forward curve is it can be quite volatile, and we, we're seeing that 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 is the situation. There's all sorts of factors in in play here. You've got storage numbers increasing in Europe. You, you've still got gas being imported from Russia. You've got gas coming through the LNG ships from Qatar and from the US. So there's all sorts of factors at play. It's very hard to predict what's going on, and and comment on it is um is a bit of a dangerous game because you can be caught out. But you know it's looking like the forward curve had stabilised, and we're going to see less volatility. But it is re- rising in the next few years to 30 euros per megawatt hour and, and, and slightly higher than that. So, Mark, what was the price of gas before the, the whole Russian debacle uh, with Ukraine? What, what was the, the sort of standard price if there was such a thing? I guess it was in the region of um, nearer to 20 euros per megawatt hour, which is, which is about 50 pence per firm. That's the kind of prices which... Uh, we were at before all of that happened. But obviously, there was, a, there was a great big peak when things got very nervous, but it's now stabilized. And, and I think we're seeing some stability in the market, which volatility is very difficult for investment. And it's better to have some stability. I, I'm happy with the prices as they are because it, we can see some stability and therefore we can attract some investment. So if we look at it from the, the opposite perspective, now that you're debt-free, and you're saying this is across the sector, there's got to be some good opportunities for you here to go in and actually get some more assets that you can improve at a discount, if you like. That absolutely should be. Now, the thing is, this is a perhaps a slightly unfashionable thing to say, but I am actually passionate on the fact that gas is the right thing to be investing in at the moment. You can't just switch off the gas supply in Europe because the lights will go out. There is insufficient renewable energy from solar and wind to power the whole of Europe around the clock. Where the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine, you've got to rely on something. And yes, you've got nuclear as the base load, and you've got other um, industries such as hydroelectric and so on. But again, it's uh, it's gas that's going to fill the gaps because you can switch it on and off so easily. And so I think there will be continued demand for gas and power projects well into the future. And that's what we're investing in. And that's what I think will make money for the company and for shareholders. So, so, Mark, since you were last on, that the, you gave um, a couple of updates on uh, PM1 while at the Selva field, and you obviously you noted that despite the decrease in gas prices, the operation reported the quarterly revenues of sort of 1.7 million euros, which is about 656,000 net to prospects. Just talk us through how things are going and, and you know, the 78,000 uh, to 80,000 standard cubic metres per day, which you reported. And also, you alluded to the potential for advancing development plans for additional resources at Selva and uh, securing land agreements. So just give us a sort of roundup of how things are progressing at, uh, at the Selva field. Well, what's happened at Selva is the operator has done an extremely good job of optimising the, um, the flow rate from the well. It's a delicate balance from a, um, a well that was drilled in 2017. So the optimum flow rate is, is uh, in the region of 80,000 uh, standard cubic meters per day. And that number is, it has been seen to be the, the optimum rate of flow from the well. With respect to the other developments, we're accumulating cash in the subsidiaries of our um, investment companies. And um, that cash is, uh, is accumulating in order to fund the three wells that we want to drill uh, in, in Italy and the five wells that are going through the permitting process in Spain. These wells will increase the production several times over and they should be producing, I hope, before the 18 months that I said earlier. But, uh, it does take time to get these uh, permits in place and the permits uh, process is hopefully going to be completed by at least by the year end or a bit before. Yeah, and how much will they sort of scale the project out in terms of the company? I mean, will they go twice the out, twice the output, three times? I mean, what sort of numbers are you looking for to uh, to, to you know to increase this uh, this revenue? Yeah, it's a slightly different, difficult calculation to make, but it's going to be in the region of three times the current production. Yeah, of for, for from these wells, uh, slightly higher, I would hope. And there'll be economies of scale on that mark. You'll end up getting more for your euro if you like um, because there's more production yeah and 
we're looking at um, a three well and five well campaign. So the, the mobilization and demobilization costs are spread across those wells uh, in each of the countries. But yes, the if you've got more wells producing, um, you've got a portfolio effect, which um, puts you in a, a, a much more solid footing. So yeah, all of these factors will come into play growing the company. And, and that's just on the uh, on the existing assets we have. And we're looking at other opportunities as well. Now, I obviously can't mention too much about those until they're, they're firm and, and uh, in progress. Well, it looks like you have a very uh, solid firm base and uh, you know from the point of view of if you're able to buy it at some at a price that is uh, less than its current valuation then uh, that seems like a bit of a no-brainer in terms of uh, a good asset to own within people's portfolios so yeah and good luck with finding some more stuff I mean obviously you've had great success so far you've managed to produce a company in in these times with uh, no debt and uh, also you know, producing assets, which has got to be the goal of uh, of most companies out there. Yeah, well, we can grow this company to beyond the um, the double valuation. So, you know, with with, with assets such as these, uh, which can which can grow organically from uh, from the wells that we are going to be producing from, we can go way more than double the valuation of the company. So. You know, it's just buying it for twice twice the price at the moment is it, cheap. Our aims are to to not stop here. It's going to be it's going to be much larger than that, and and that's that's the direction of travel. Sounds good. Good luck, and we look forward to uh, hearing what uh, assets you may have uh, secured over the next period of time. Because I think now's got to be a great time to be uh, to be investing in this space. I believe so for a long time, which is why I'm in this game and uh, why I enjoy doing it. Very good. And so, yeah, Mark Routh, CEO of Prospects Energy. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. This podcast was brought to you by Roast PR Limited. If you would like to appear on a future episode of The Sunday Roast, please email admin at thesundayroast.net.